The following program is a production of KHET in Honolulu, Hawaii Public Television. Aloha from Hawaii, and welcome once again to the International Kitchen, where delicious foods and fascinating people. Nino J. Martin creates tantalizing and mouth-watering dishes from around the world designed to fit the schedule of a busy yet creative chef. Take time to treat your palate to an astounding array of worldwide cuisine from the International Kitchen. And now, here's Nino. Aloha, how are you? Nice to have you back with us again on the International Kitchen. It's certainly uh, very pleasant to see you every week right here and come into your living rooms or wherever you happen to be watching the show. We also want to thank some of you who have taken the time to uh, write to us and to call us and let us know what you think of the program and make some very, very good suggestions. And we're trying to uh, listen to those suggestions and from time to time we bring them here on the show. Today we have a very exciting program and a very fun guest and a professional in the food business. A gentleman who was actually born in Belgium, came to America and learned the restaurant business here and became very um, successful here in Hawaii. And uh, first in Honolulu, and then he moved over to our beautiful Valley Isle of Maui and uh, opened up two restaurants over there, Shea Paul's and Monaco's. And I'd like to have you welcome a dear friend of mine, as a matter of fact, Lucien Chardonnay. Welcome. Welcome to the International Nice Kitchen. to be here. Uh, Finally. Finally, you came on the program. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to get you on for a long time. Well, we finally find a, a little something that's close to my country. Yeah, like something a, to talk about. Something to talk about. Yeah. And uh, the Belgian Mind Dive, as you know, is from Belgium. Right. Nothing like the Brussels Sprite, but the Belgian Mind Dives are really from Belgium. Right. They are from uh, close to Brussels. That's where they grow most of them. Mm -hmm. And they usually uh, grow them in a greenhouse, mm -hmm. you know, and the type of greenhouse is a little different from all the others because it's all dark inside mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons. Did the Belgian come to have actually begin in Belgium or was it well, originally somewhere else? Yeah, I believe I read it somewhere before that uh, the early Egyptians already had Belgian endives and I believe also in Indonesia. I don't know exactly where but uh, I heard they had some over there. Of course at that time they didn't have the the greenhouse that they got right now. Mm -hmm. Of course, it came over to uh, Europe and uh, to France and to Belgium in the 16th century. That's and, exactly uh, right. But before we get into that, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about you. All right. Uh, that sounds good. Your name, Chabonnet. Now, that's a, it's a lovely, nice name. Well, what, what does uh, mean? Chabonnet means coal man. Coal man. You know, like the, not the miner, but uh, whoever's in charge of the coal, you know, like in the old days, you know, they used to bring, fill the cellar with coal and the... So you said deliver the coal to the home. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. But you were born in Belgium, mm -hmm. and of course you grew up with a culture of the Flemish culture, and, but you're, fr you're actually French. Uh, well, actually I'm from Brussels, and it's uh -huh. something totally different from the Flemish and the Walloons. You know, uh -huh. it's like the north is Flemish, the south is Walloons, and Brussels, we got our own little gang over there that, mm -hmm. you know, and we don't take any parts of anything. <laughs> well, and it's not that big, yeah. though, you know. But, um, well, great. And we'll talk a little bit more uh, uh, about good. his background and coming over here to America and, and uh, being very successful here, as a matter of yeah. fact, with uh, two very fine restaurants. But again, getting back to the uh, Belgian uh, endive, let's show our friends out there uh -huh. what the Belgian endive actually looks okay. like. And uh, you, you probably see it at your uh, markets, and you can find it in most supermarkets. And they're not really that expensive, but a lot of people don't know what to do with these things. So from time to time on the program, we'd like to bring you some of these exotic vegetables and kind of introduce you to some new recipes. And that's exactly what we're doing today. Let me cut one of these in half, right. uh, Lucian, for just a second and show our friends what it actually looks like. The uh, endive is called chicory in uh, England. And uh, it's a member of the Aster family. And if you're familiar with artichokes, which I'm sure you are, and safflower, and uh, salsify, and, and sunflower, they're all a member of the same family. It's really quite a lovely, lovely vegetable. It's a slightly bitter, ever so slightly bitter. It has even, a nice even tang more to it. than uh, slightly. It's, it, is, uh, it is bitter. You know, that's why uh, you know, when you cook them, you get to cook them for quite a long time mm -hmm. so that the bitterness gets out of here. 
but uh, and, but of course they're white. If they were yeah. green, uh, as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. they put them in uh, in closed hothouses so right. they don't see the sun. Mm -hmm. And in the olden days, what they used to do is take these um, the endives and wrap them and tie them up so they wouldn't open up because if they, normally Just the, the bud would open would up green, and uh, would know, be green and, and of course it would be very be bitter. White. And who mm -hmm. wants a bitter endive after That's all? Right. Who wants well, that? now you've got some cooking okay, here. Okay, yeah. Okay, maybe. Uh, Right here now, we're just blanching this for a few minutes, mm -hmm. exactly five minutes. This is just hot water with salt, mm -hmm. you know. It's about to get ready. You know, okay, one thing with endives, they absorb a lot of liquid. Mm -hmm. You know, they get a lot of water. So one thing, once you bleach them, before you braise them, either in the oven or in the pan like we're going to do, you get to drain them very, very well. Mm -hmm. you now, you got that secret from somebody, right? Well, this is, a, as my mother would say, make sure that you tell them to drain it very, very well. <laughs> so he okay. called his mother in well, Brussels yeah. last night just to make sure that he got the correct exactly, instructions. Exactly, exactly. So uh, now, what are we actually going to be making today? What's okay. the dish called? This is a very popular dish in, uh, in Belgium, and it's mostly a winter dish because endive is very popular in, uh, in Belgium like during the winter because, you know, during the summer, the weather is not uh, that great over there, so during the summer, you get all the regular vegetables. But with, during the winter, since it's in hot house, you get a lot of endive or chicon, as we call them mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. And this is a very easy dish. You know, it's called a roulade d'endive au gratin. Which roulade means roll something. Exactly. And exactly. You're gonna put, what are you going to roll with it? It's braised endive, and then it's rolled in ham. Mm -hmm. Then we put a bechamel. Mm -hmm. You know how to make a bechamel. I, I hope. can make a bechamel ah, okay, for good. you. Sure. So we put roulade the bechamel, then we put a couple of types of cheese, you know, like some, probably some Swiss Gruyere cheese and a little Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. And then I think at the same time what we could do, we can make a little pomme duchesse at the same mm -hmm. time because it's the kind of potato that's, um, that goes well with that type of dish. Though, and you know? it's very fancy too. You know, exactly. never, never let it be no, said that the International Kitchen doesn't get fancy, exactly, right? Exactly. So uh, we're going to be doing some Duchess potatoes for you today too. Okay. So why don't we get started and okay. uh, Sounds good. get going I think here. that uh, we can remove this from the stove over here and then you're going you're gonna to do this there. Oh, the, uh, you're gonna best, do you want me to do the bechamel? Bechamel, okay, okay, that sounds good. And but at the you're same time, drain this. this. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna drain that all. I'm gonna drain this. Yeah, well, while you're doing that, I'll go and okay, create places over here. Uh-huh. One thing also with the end dive, that's always leave the end, the tail, if you can call it, because if you cut this off, all the leaves starts falling apart. So ah, so you don't want that? No, certainly. no, not right now. Maybe at yeah. the end. I might point out, too, that in case you can't find uh, some endive in your local market, you might want to try this dish with another one that we've done in the past, and that was fennel. Mm -hmm. And also with, uh, you can do it with some celery. Exactly. Same thing with celery. Exactly. It's very, very good. Okay, while you're draining that, I'm going to start up the, um, the bechamel, which mm -hmm. all of you know is very simple to make. You start off with um, about four tablespoons of butter. Okay, we're going to make a roux now. Now the roux, uh, if you watch this program before, you know what the roux is, and that's a thickening agent for any type of a sauce. And it's a very basic French thickener, and you don't get the flour flavor, which is wonderful with the roux. And you simply melt some butter, uh, melts about four tablespoons of butter, and you put a little bit of flour in it. And once you get the flour and the butter cooking together, you actually do the cooking of the flour at this point, so you get rid of all of that floury um, uh, taste. And then you plunge some hot milk into it, and you've got a bechamel, and you flavor it with a little bit of salt and some white pepper, and of course, some fresh nutmeg, which brings out a nice sweetness in it. And then uh, you can put, you can turn that bechamel into a mornier simply by adding a little bit of cheese to it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add the, uh, I think the butter's pretty well melted here. Now I'll add about four tablespoons or so of um, flour. Now one thing that you want to be very careful of, and that is not to overcook it, because it'll turn brown. And that is not too good. All right, while I'm stirring that, how's the... Uh, the are coming? looking good, though. They're starting... Uh, 
So you're actually going to braise the endive, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. So in other words, to braise the endive, just take, I would say, what would you call this? About two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Yeah. Okay. Let me just point out here, too, on this butter and roux that I'm making. Uh, you can see this thing foaming up at this point. And I just brought it down, and it's just beginning to foam up. And you know that that's really cooking very nicely. Now you can see that sloshing around. And I'll have some milk in here in just a second. I'm going to overcook it, so I'll just put it on the side for a second while that milk heats up. Okay, so I get the butter over here. Got some butter, two tablespoons and, uh, of butter. Yeah, half a lemon. And half a lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usually, you're not supposed to put the... The seeds. The seeds. Okay. But, uh, oh, that won't do anything to it, I don't think. I don't want to scratch a beautiful pan over here. Are those nice pans? Yeah, just yeah. beautiful. So you just lay the mm -hmm. uh, blanched, and how, how long did you blanch those? Uh, uh, exactly five minutes and 32 seconds. Five minutes and 32 seconds, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, it all depends also on the size of the endive. You know, if you get, uh, if you do have a big endive, it's only normal that it would take longer. I'm going to move this over here, if you don't all mind. Right. Is that all right? Good. Yeah. Sounds good to me. This has got better Because this is going to be, it's going to be staying there for at least between 40 to 45 minutes, of course, depend, depending on the size, but, you know. And then once in a while, just turn them. And, uh, but you, when you say braising now, you actually want to make them brown, don't exactly. you? We exactly. We have one here, as a matter of fact, that, that's mm -hmm. braised, and I uh, can show you what that looks like. The one that's already been done. You can see it's kind of browned and uh, really quite lovely. And then after you get these all done, you'll... Um, be able to wrap them. Endive also is like, a, if you're a kid in Belgium, it's like spinach over here. You know, nobody likes it. No kids But you like eat a lot of uh, endive over there. Yeah. Huh? But I think it's uh, becoming more and more international because you see more and more endive all over, you know, in nice restaurants, either in salads or as a vegetables. And once in a while at Chapel, uh, during the winter, we get, uh, we get this on the menu, mm -hmm. you know. But we try to change once in a while. Now, is this, is this something that um, actually was raised in Belgium and that, that's the only place in Europe, or was it... Um, to tell you the truth, uh, so far... It's kind of hard to track that down. Isn't yeah, it? I haven't heard anything or any place that uh, do grow and die. They were trying in, um, in California, I heard, but uh, I didn't know what the outcome of that... Uh, you can. Okay. Now, this is all ready to go. I brought mm -hmm. the milk up. It's scalded. And I brought the milk up to a scald and the, bringing this back up to temperature again, uh, letting that foam. And it's ready to plunge now. And all you do is simply take this off the heat and plunge this hot milk right into the pan, like that. You see it coming right up and almost over the stove. And you just stir it. And that will thicken up for you very nicely and it'll produce a beautiful uh, bechamel for you. Don't forget the nutmeg, man. Oh, no, never do that. I'm going to turn mm -hmm. the heat down a little bit and kind of cook mm -hmm. it over the heat. And the longer you cook this, of course, you'll evaporate more liquid and uh, moisture. And, of course, you'll make it thicker and thicker. So it depends on how thick uh, the boss here wants me to make I it. like it thick, really, really thick like glue, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this over here, you can braise them. You can either leave them on the skillets over the stove like this, or if you want it, you know, it's nicer for the show, but you can also put it in the oven and just forget about it for about mm -hmm. 35 to 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's braising. Why don't uh -huh. we uh, start on the potatoes? Okay, that sounds like a... Now, we've got here thing. some uh, potatoes, some standard old russet potatoes that we've uh, boiled and mashed. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can see that they just match very nicely there. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're going to do the Dutch's potatoes. Okay. Look at this sauce, how thick it is now. It's beginning to really thicken up, and it's really quite lovely. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Very rich, creamy, velvety sauce. Makes you hungry, doesn't it? Okay, a little bit of okay, butter in there now. Butter. 
How much better do you put? Uh, well, you got about a cup and a half of mashed potatoes okay. in. Uh, so let's say with the two, three if, tablespoons. Oh yeah. If it, if, you did, if it was two tablespoons before, now this is three tablespoons. Okay. Better eat it up a bit. Okay. In other words, what we're doing over here, it's just a mashed potato amélioré. In other words, what you know, amélioré. You know, make it better. You put a little butter. Put a an egg yolk. You put a little nutmeg, you put a little cream. You're trying to get the consistency that it's not too runny, it's not too hard, but it's just right to go to a pastry bag. Mm -hmm. Because in other words, the Duchesse potato is um, known for the grand yours, you know, like uh, around the time of Louis XIV and the Duke and Duchess, you know, they like that things nicely done. So in other words, you make the potato and you just arrange it around the end dive in the, you know. Those are the days of the gout. Is that what it is? Well, yes. yes. They all used to run around with puffy, huge arms and all that kind of thing because they used to eat too much. You know? Anyway, I'm going to finish the uh, bechamel now while uh, mm -hmm. we're warming up the potatoes. And you just take a, a sprinkle here of um, nutmeg. And nutmeg always gives it a good flavor. You can even put a little bit in here, too. You want some in there, too? Yeah, okay. I love nutmeg. I like to put nutmeg in uh, vegetables. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, even when I'm doing a salad, uh, I take a couple of sprinkles in, you know, and it's, uh, is that enough? Uh, more? No, no, no. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of uh, picks up the flavor a little bit. You see where all that went? Oh, oh that's where it is. There it is. It's all down inside. All right, now we stir that around. And I'm going to take a whiff of this because when you're cooking, you have to, you have to use your nose. You oh, that's that nice. Mm, Isn't that nice? nice? Yeah, that's wonderful. And I'm going to reach over, excuse me for a second here, and finish this up. You take a little bit of uh, ground white pepper uh, that most households have, and you give it a sprinkle of that. Not too much, but, and also a touch of salt. If you're using salt, if you're not using salt, then don't use it. And I think that that's a, a lovely bechamel. Let's take a look at that. That beautiful, rich, velvety sauce. Isn't that lovely? Nice and thick. And that will go over the um, endive. Mm -hmm. Now, while you're doing that, I'm going to start the next phase here. Okay, Sounds and that's, good uh, we were talking earlier about braising endive, and mm -hmm. you, can, you can also use it in lots of other ways. And of course, salads are very, very popular with endive. It has that slight bitter taste, and exactly. um, then you put a nice uh, oil and raspberry vinegar dressing on top of that, and oh, you'll be humming for days out there when you try this. If you haven't tried it, please try the endive, because mm -hmm. it's pretty wonderful. Uh, let's do the salad then. This is um, regular our Manoa lettuce here, but you can use other types of lettuce if you want, butter lettuce. And we have uh, just leaves of endive. And you can be fancy if you'd like. And I'm going to be fancy. Mm -hmm. Also, one, thing, one thing with endive, that, you know, just the way like this, it's very nice if you get dips. Oh, yeah, you know, that's you a just, good idea. You know, just serve it like this and make a little bunch, you know, like carrots and broccoli. You can have endive, you know, and it's good as a dip, you know, as a very good idea. snack. Very good idea. So we're just going to kind of put it around the edges here. Well, maybe a few mushrooms, yeah. I'll sure. Put some mushrooms. See? Poetry in motion. Absolutely. But isn't that what cooking is all about? I absolutely believe Something I really amazing. admire about the French, and of course the Japanese too, they, uh, they have magnificent ways of serving food. So how do you like America after all these years? You've been over well, here how long now? 17, 18, 19 years. Why, you were a mere baby when you came over. I was two years old. Oh, of course, yes. We didn't tell you that Lucian lies a lot, but no, I'm just kidding. So my nose yeah. got bigger all the time. <laughs> you and Pinocchio, huh? 
Okay, now here's the endive salad now with the manoa lettuce or butter lettuce or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you want to use. And it kind of sticks up and it's very decorative like that. And we're also going to toss in that, in the center of that, some uh, sliced mushrooms. It gives it a nice flavor, the flavor of the uh, bitterness of the endive and the nice mushroom paste. That's pretty. Okay. And I'm going to also do another type of salad here that's very popular, and I, and I suppose it's kind of almost in the new belle cuisine, isn't it? Uh, uh, yes, I would say so. You know, with, um, with the raspberry uh, dressing and uh, okay, one thing, I get uh, the, the pomme du chaise there about uh, done. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, for the ladies at home that like to make it nicely, you know. Now, why are you doing that to this bag? Okay, that's, that's one important. thing that uh, I want to show, because I've seen a lot of ladies and they get the pastry back that's and that's what i've heard and they <laughs> please and they usually go like this you know and it's always messy uh -huh. so okay i'm going to okay. show once and for all people in america this is how you do it this is it folks this you're learning it. it now from a you heard it first. Chef. you heard it first see you put it there so that you know you get a good base and i'm probably going to drop the whole thing but you know and then you just stuff it in so it doesn't go out all over the place. Exactly. So that's very clever. You know, especially, you know, for the ladies when you're doing the chocolate mousse and you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. okay. And of course, then you get all kinds of variation. Oh, fancy. Do you have a name for that? This is the Nino Martin special. Oh, I see. Just for this show, huh? Okay. Well, that's yeah. great. And that's Dutch's potatoes, folks, and it's a beautiful border. You can do them uh, wherever, wherever yeah, you want to put them. You can put them up on top if yeah. you want or anything. Exactly. You want. One thing that's nice about the uh, Dutch's potato is that when you finish the dish, and then you put your bechamel, and then you do all your cheese, and you put it in the oven to be gratiné, it starts to get a little color mm -hmm. you know, because you got eggs mm -hmm. in the potatoes and the cream, and so that's uh, one way. Mm -hmm to, you know, finish. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to show mm -hmm. them how to finish the salad now. And um, you simply take the, the endive, and here we've got one cut in half, and we're going to cut it in half one more time. Okay? And I'm going to cut the end off and place it on a dish like this. And take the other half, one bad leaf there. And you're going to cut this in half again. Take off that that end, and actually you could cut it uh, another time if you wanted to, but this is just to give you kind of an idea. You don't have to be super fancy. Uh, that's all there is to it. one and that per person as a salad is usually more than plenty. Mm -hmm. And it makes a very lovely yeah. little salad, doesn't it? And uh, then, if you happen to have some leftover chicken mm -hmm. or uh, some duck, you simply place that here. Mm -hmm. and you serve it, and I'll make the dressing in just a few mm -hmm. seconds. And just a few minutes that we have left, let's yeah. show, show them how uh, okay, we're you gonna, do the, uh, yeah, the roll. Okay, we're going to do the roll. Yeah. So I'm going to move this slightly over this side. Of course, for the roulade, you just take any type of ham. You know, we just, just took some commercial ham over here. You just take the slice. Now, of course, usually, this got to cook a little longer, but since the show is only so long, you know. So just roll them up. And once you put it on the tray or on your dish, always put the, how would you call it? The bottom. The bottom. Underneath. Yeah. And so you can tuck it under. Exactly. So it doesn't flip flap all over the place. Okay. Huh? Okay, we got one done. And a few more to go. And so that's all nice and braised now. And you roll mm -hmm. it with the ham and you place it over into the gratiné dish. Okay, and now let me just finish, while you're doing that, let me finish mm -hmm. the, um, the vinaigrette. Uh, the, uh, vinaigrette. And we'll put in about a half a cup or so of uh, olive oil. This is kind of slow, I'll just do it from the other side, it's a lot better. Half a cup of olive oil. I've got a little bit of ground fresh pepper in here and a tiny bit of salt. And I'm, today I'm using raspberry vinegar. Now you've heard a great deal about raspberry vinegar, and basically it's white wine vinegar 
flavored with raspberries. And it's, um, it's very aromatic and very tasty. Mm, good. And about three tablespoons or so of that. And you simply take your salad that you've fixed up here, and you take this vinegar and oil and salt and pepper, and you just kind of pour it over the top of that. It makes a beautiful, lovely dressing for your salad. And the same thing for the one over here. And just kind of put a little bit of dressing on top of that. And I think that you'll, your whole family will appreciate this. Incidentally, this is a wonderful little salad that you can get the kids to work on because they can be very creative and you can get them started in that kitchen early. So um, they'll appreciate the art of uh, cooking. And it's awfully nice to get the family together and share in the kitchen. Unfortunately, we are all very busy and Sometimes we don't have that kind of time, but it's good to make it and bring that family together. And let me put this out here. And now you're going to put the um, bechamel, the bechamel on top there. Really. Yeah. The glue, as I call it. The glue. <laughs> Not really. And in the, the bechamel, you, <coughs> you, can, uh, you don't have to be afraid to put you know, enough because it's very tasty. And then every time you take a bite of a piece of on the eve and uh, in a hand. It's really very nice. Okay, well, now we've got one in the oven here. Mm -hmm. uh, after you get through with the bechamel. Well, I think this one's going to be better. And then you put that, oh, you put some cheese on top of yeah, that too. Yeah, let's put a little cheese too. Okay. Ah, what have we got for cheese over here? Well, we have some Swiss mm -hmm. cheese. A little Swiss cheese. Ooh, boy, that looks good. Mm -hmm. And you can see what Lucian has done here. He's just put two, he piped two rows of the Duchess potatoes on there. Little Parmesan. And uh, again, you can be imaginative and, and uh, be able to do this and creatively any way you want. And this is what it looks like when it comes, when you put it under the broiler. Mm -hmm. And then you finish it, and here you get the before and the after. Isn't that beautiful? You have the um, braised endive wrapped with a little bit of ham bechamel on top of that, piped Duchess potatoes around the edges, and a little bit of uh, Emmentaler or uh, Swiss cheese, mm -hmm. and a little bit of Parmesan cheese, well, and uh, you, you will have them, you'll be the hit of the block exactly. if you make this. Not too expensive, and it's certainly a treat to have pull the family together and do this with them, and there are some friends. Why not? Yeah. You know? Lucien's Charbonnet has been our very special guest today from Maui, owner and uh, manager of uh, Chez Paul in Monaco's. Thank you so much for being here. And finally, you came on the show, and I'm glad. And uh, we had an opportunity to be able to share your background and ethnic background oh. and some of the rest of your It was my pleasure. Grazie. You know, you're welcome. OK. And bon appetit. Yeah, thank you for joining us on the International Kitchen. Aloha, and you take care of yourself now.